everybody, welcome back to the Medical Projects YouTube channel. If you are new around here, my name is Olivia and I'm a second year medical student at King's College London. And here on the Medical Projects YouTube channel, we are dedicated to creating high yield videos to ensure that we give you the best tips and bits of advice to secure your dream spot at medical school. So if you haven't done so already, do make sure you subscribe to our channel, turn the notification bell on so that you can be notified when we post, and also make sure to go and visit us on all of our social media links. The link will be in the description box. But before we start today's video, we have a fantastic giveaway for you guys to thank you all for your incredible support on this channel. We love reading your comments and interacting with you and we're so happy that you've been finding these videos useful because we absolutely love creating them for you. So to say thank you, we are going to be giving away two prizes to two different winners. The first one is going to be a spot on our GP Live course, which is basically an amazing interactive live online course which lasts for a day and you get to learn how to take patient histories and you'll be guided by real life doctors and this is an incredible work experience opportunity that you can write about at length in your personal statement and then the second prize we're going to be giving away is a similar one but it is our ward round live course which instead focuses on more hospital based scenarios and again you'll be able to take histories interact with patients and be taught by top quality doctors now this giveaway is going to be celebrating 2,500 subscribers so we'll be announcing the winner when we hit that milestone which should be very soon and will be even sooner if you guys share the news tell your friends spread the word on Instagram and create a bit of buzz and then that way I'm sure we'll hit this milestone in no time to enter there's going to be a form in the description box below that I'm going to link for you and you guys just have to fill out the form it's really quick and easy and then you'll be entered into our giveaway we appreciate that a lot of people are struggling to get work experience right now and they're worried it's going to hit into that application so definitely check out this giveaway and enter because these are some fantastic opportunities for you to get hold of and to write about in your personal statement which will really impress the admissions tutors so for today's video we thought we'd focus on exploring how to do well in medical school because excitingly a lot of you guys will have been getting your offers for medical school or you might be on a gap year waiting to go to medical school and so we thought we'd dip our toes into exploring what medical school is really like and how to do well in medical school now the first year of medical school is very overwhelming. Even for myself as a graduate beforehand, I found the first year of medical school very hard because it is very lecture heavy. There's so much content to learn and it can make studying really overwhelming. So for today's video, I thought I'd focus on my top tips and resources I recommend for you to smash your first year at medical school. So I'm going to be breaking this video down into three parts. The first one is going to be the things I recommend you buying before you get to medical school. The second part is going to be study resources I recommend. And finally, the third part is going to be talking about how I recommend achieving a healthy work social life balance because medical school can be very busy and it can be really easy easy to get caught in the cycle of just studying for endless hours and we want to avoid that because we want you to enjoy your first year so I hope you guys find this video informative and without further ado let's get into it so for the first category we're going to be covering the things I recommend you buying before you get to medical school the first thing I recommend buying probably won't come as any surprise and that is a stethoscope so I went for the Lippmann Classic 3 model that's the one most medical students tend to have just in case you're wondering which model to get and I went for it in a plum color because I've always really liked purple so that's the one I went for. Now, quick disclaimer, obviously in your first year of medical school, you're in your pre-clinical years, so you're not going to be using this loads, but you will be using it when you get onto placement, which for me started in my second year. However, I still think this is useful to have because you do practice skills like manual blood pressure and various other things. So it's useful to have and it's only going to enhance your learning and if you have one available to you it just makes it that much easier to practice outside of class so I definitely recommend getting a stethoscope if you think you know you'll make use of it in first year but if not wait a little while also one thing I do want to point out is that at the start of the year in freshers week there's often loads of discounts available for these so maybe hold off buying one I know it can be really exciting to get your first stethoscope but 
maybe hold off because you'll often get some discounts so you might as well save some money the second thing i recommend getting is a good pair of headphones now this isn't something i even really considered and i only purchased these kind of i think in my second year so i went for the beats solo ones i know these are quite old i think these are the beats solo three maybe now um but they're wireless which i really like because you don't have to worry about all the cords and they're really nice to use in the library because it just blocks out noise and makes studying that much easier so definitely recommend having some form of headphones be it like your iphone headphones or airpods or some wireless ones because i use these every day so definitely recommend getting a pair of headphones now the next thing i recommend getting is again another quite obvious one but i recommend getting a laptop now a lot of people ask which laptop they should invest in and honestly it's kind of up to you. I've always been a Mac user just because I really like the kind of interface and I really like using this to edit videos and whatnot but you can get whatever laptop you would like. You are going to be using your laptop an awful lot for essays, writing lecture notes and various other assignments so definitely make sure it's going to be reliable. The next thing I recommend getting again is not a necessity but I'm recommending it to you if you've been wondering about it and that is getting an iPad. Now I saved up my money to get one because I noticed loads of medical students using it and I was getting really overwhelmed with writing paper notes. I've always been a paper-based student but in medical school there's just so much to learn so i decided to invest in an ipad and i got the ipad pro this is the 12.9 inch and i got the apple pencil there's loads of other models though so i really recommend researching into the ones that might be suitable for you this has been so good i use good notes 5 on my ipad to take handwritten notes so it's still like i'm kind of writing paper notes and it's just been way more convenient than writing everything on paper because this is all i have to carry around now i don't have to carry around big folders and i don't have to file away my notes because it's all in one place here so definitely a very worthwhile investment next we're going to be moving on to the study resources i recommend obviously studying comprises a massive part of your medical school experience and i have been through i've been through a lot of different resources and i feel like i've really honed them down into the ones that have been super helpful so i really want to share those with you now the first thing i recommend is something to make those long hours studying anatomy a bit more bearable if you're like me and you just don't click with anatomy and by don't click with anatomy i mean it's like the worst thing that's ever happened to me i really recommend getting an anatomy i nearly took my eye out with that you see like this is why me and anatomy don't get on i really recommend getting an anatomy coloring book so i have the netta's anatomy coloring book volume 2 edition this is the one i personally really recommend and the reason for that is because the diagrams are simple enough to understand and they're not super super complicated so the way i use it is if i know i have an anatomy class on i don't know the abdominal muscles for example i'll just go through um the pages in my book just so that i have an idea about what's going on it's just a really relaxing way to revise which is not so you know taxing as maybe some other forms of revision so i definitely recommend Recommend checking this book out this is kind of what it looks like so I just color in the various muscles and then obviously it's got loads of information here too so I just highlight any relevant information and it's just a really handy thing to have so I would highly recommend because anatomy it uh, you know I'm still we're not there yet me and anatomy but the next thing I recommend is something that you may not use so much in your first year, but more in your clinical years. But having said that, I still personally wish I'd bought it a bit earlier. And that is the Oxford Handbook of Clinical Medicine, also known as the Cheese and Onion Book. So, yeah. But this is a really excellent book, which basically summarizes pretty much all the conditions in medicine, or at least the main ones. And it talks about how to manage them, signs and symptoms you should look for. And it just puts things in a more clinical context. And whilst your first year of medical school is kind of focusing on the basic underlying principles and the science behind everything, I just think this is nice to kind of 
keep the focus on the clinical picture. It's got loads of really good pictures and it's just, it's really helpful. Like I take it with me whenever I'm in hospital and I have a bit of spare time. I can just read up on some of the conditions I'm expecting to see that day. Yeah, really helps you out. So those are all the textbooks I use. I personally don't recommend buying these really expensive physical textbooks because one, you can access loads of them online and two, pretty much all the relevant information you're ever going to need in medicine is on the internet somewhere. The first website I recommend is called Teach Me Anatomy and Teach Me Physiology. And these are some really, really good online websites to help with anatomy and physiology. And they just simplify things down. They put things in really clear, concise diagrams and they just make it way easier to learn anatomy. Making it as simple as possible is really helpful, but it does it in enough depth that it's going to be more than enough for your examinations. So I really recommend checking that out and they do also have an app. I've also been really trying to make use of question banks this year and it's only something I've recently started to use, but I really recommend using them from day one because your exams are going to be based on a wide variety of questions and only by practicing questions and identifying your weak areas will you improve. And so the one I personally have been using and would recommend is PassMed. And it's really, really great because it just gives you an explanation as to why you are right or why you are wrong. And there are so many different questions. There's a question bank, which is specifically for years one to three students, which is the one I've been using and it's totally free for a year. So I definitely recommend doing this. The best way you can study in medical school is by ensuring you're doing active recall. I'm someone who gets quite lazy with revision and just likes to read my notes. And I'm realizing that that just isn't working for me in medicine. And so to assist with that process, I also use a computer program called Notion. And again, this is something I only discovered this year. This is a really cool computer program because basically what I do is whilst I watch a lecture, I'm on Notion and I'm writing myself questions based off of the lecture material. And I use this really nice little toggle function to hide the answer so that when it comes to revising, I just kind of run through the questions I've written myself. And that is a much more productive and interactive form of revision than just using your notes and reading your notes. So definitely recommend checking that out also. I also really recommend Geeky Medics if you are struggling with clinical skills. They have a bunch of videos on YouTube and they also have a website to accompany these videos with all the different bits of text and information that you need surrounding the clinical skill and it is just a lifesaver. Geeky Medics is kind of the gold standard when it comes to OSCEs in medical school. So if you're needing help with the practical side of medicine, that's definitely what I would recommend. Finally, the last thing I recommend is using YouTube videos. There are some really good YouTube channels that do these almost like mini lectures. Sometimes, unfortunately, some lectures are just not very useful in medical school or some are way too overcomplicated. So definitely make use of online resources like YouTube. I really like using the Osmosis videos and also the Ken hub videos so definitely check out all the different channels on youtube and see which ones work for you so finally we're going to move on to the category that deals with having a healthy work social life balance it's no secret that medical school is very very difficult there is so much to learn there's always so much to do but I do think that there's this misconception that medical students have no life. And so I want to offer some tips for how I've managed to do everything I want to do and still sleep. <laughs> so, so the first thing I recommend doing is in your freshest week, try and join all the clubs that you think you'll enjoy because surrounding yourself with people with common interests is such a nice thing to do. And it's such a great way of making friends. So you might choose to join a sports society. There's even like a hummus society, a hot chocolate society. Um, so there's always something for everyone. So definitely try and get involved in some extracurriculars. And it's just a nice way to ensure that every week you're breaking up your heavy study schedule. Another tip I have for staying on top of your work is try and plan out your week every week. Again, I use Notion to do this. I just make a to-do list at the start of each week. And that way I know, you know, when my deadlines are. And if you stay organized, it just reduces your stress level so much. And part of staying organized is also to make sure you just revise your content early. So something I used to do is I'd leave my revision till last minute and it would just make me so stressed when it came to revising. And remember in medical school that the information just accumulates. Like it's not like you can do a year of medical school and then you don't ever get tested on that stuff again. You do. And so the best thing I recommend doing is like I said, use a program like Notion 
make some questions for yourself, some flashcards, whatever it is, and just periodically review this because it will just make your life that much easier and it will boost your marks significantly. Finally, the last tip I have for staying well in medical school and looking after yourself is to make sure that you identify your support networks. And what I mean by this is you know that you have friends to turn to or you can talk to your personal tutor. Make sure you identify your ports of call when it comes to you know, struggling in medical school or if you have any unexpected difficulties. You don't want to feel stressed wondering, you know, who on earth am I supposed to contact? So become familiar with your head of year, the pastoral support team and anyone else that is here for your welfare because there's always someone to talk to and university can be a really overwhelming experience whilst it is so much fun. Um, so just make sure you're identifying those support networks really early. So those are all the things I recommend you getting and doing for your first year of medical school and I hope this makes the journey into your first year a lot smoother and you know you learn some tips from this and are able to study a bit more effectively. Let me know if you would like some more videos about medical school or the first year of medical school. I'd be happy to do some more. Make sure once again that you subscribe to this channel so that we can hit 2,500 subscribers and announce our really exciting giveaway winners. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in another video very soon.